Good evening, everyone. How are you guys? Okay. So let me start. Today I had got one more request. Just a minute. Let me open my PPT. Today we'll be doing something on vector diagrams. Oh my God, there's a lot of noise here. Practice, people are bursting like anything. I hope you can see my screen and I'm happy to announce today that today is my ninety seventh video. Okay, good. Now let us begin. Welcome, welcome everyone to the 97th video on misconceptions in physics in problem solving. My name is Dr. Ratankar Rao and I teach physics for the students studying in an international school in Bangalore. And um, at the same time, I also do coaching one-on-one. -on -one. And my interest is something like this wherein it's a part of my hobby wherein uh, I, when I write the, when I create the papers, I look at the possible problems, okay, why students, what students make and uh, look at the basic misconceptions they have. Maybe two concepts are very similar and they get confused. And as a result of it, I just mark those problems and finally I try to solve them. This is what I do. I have more than 200 such misconceptions which I have been doing every day. But uh, apart from it, some students personally send me an email or message me asking that uh, they do not understand a particular concept and uh, can you please help us out. So the result is this and at the same time some of my students whom I coach personally on a one-on-one -on -one level, they also have some problems. They also say, okay, so we got confused with these concepts. Can you help us out? So I try to solve such concepts also. Okay. So today's chapter, uh, today's problem, which I'll be working on is on vectors, especially vectors in 3D. Okay, let us look at a very creative problem. And before I start, let me just show you my website. My website is ratankar.com. You can visit my website. And there are several videos which I have posted. Okay, you can have a look at it. And uh, whichever you like, do share, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more such updates. Thank you. Now let us look at the problem. A student holds an A4 size of paper parallel to the ground at a height of 1.5 meters. So what does he do? He holds a paper which is at the height of 1.5 meters like this. And then an ant walks in an anti-clockwise direction on the edge of the paper. So there is an ant here. This ant is now moving in this direction, anti-clockwise direction. It moves like this, then it can move like this. It is moving only on the edge of the paper. Okay, And it's never said it moves in a crossway or whatever it is. As the ant is walking, the paper is dropped. You drop the paper. So therefore, this is the sheet of paper. This is the origin where the ant starts walking. It's moving like this. As it falls, it moves 50 centimeters. Okay, As the ant is walking, it is dropped. Now, this is the ground. The paper falls here. The paper falls here and it falls over here. It doesn't fall here. It says it falls, it moves 50 centimeter. And if the time taken to the ground is 1.5 second. Okay, so calculate the magnitude of the ant's displacement. Very simple question. So towards it, now when you say you have dropped it, the paper doesn't drop directly here. It says the paper falls to a distance of 50 centimeter. How does how much does it fall to a distance of 50 centimeter forwards? So which means that might be it can fall here. It can fall here can fall here. And uh, what is the length and breadth? Uh, that's not given. Okay, fine. Okay, so you need to find out what is the displacement. How do you find the displacement? See, maybe after some time, the ant would have moved like this, after it has moved like this, maybe to reach this point, this point, let us say, conveniently it has moved over here. It has moved over here. Okay. Now, you need to find out what is the displacement. How do you find the displacement? The displacement is, say, this is my, this is my, you need to first 
draw the x, y, and z axis. Therefore, now this is my x axis, then this is my y axis, and this is my z axis. And then you have to do it. Now, what did the student do? As the paper falls down, it ant moves by 50 centimeter. Now there is a confusion. Ant moves by 50 centimeter, which is given. What is it given? As it falls, it moves 50 centimeter. Now, whenever a question has it, okay, you need to be very careful. So, what is that it refers to? The it here refers to the distance the paper has moved forward. It does not refer to the ant has moved forward. How do you know this? You know this because it says the time taken is given here. Time taken by the paper to fall down is given. And also you see here the ant is moving at 20 centimeter per second. Okay. Making use of these two, 20 centimeter per second and time, you can easily find out what is the distance moved by the ant, which would be V into T, 1.5 seconds, which would now be equal to 20 centimeter into 1.5 seconds. What is this? Distance moved by the ant. 20 into 1.5 will be equal to how much? 21s are 20, point phase are 10, so this should be 30 centimeter, right? Yes, 30 centimeter, you should have moved. Now, the question is, okay, where is the ant? Now, towards it, there is one more clue given here. In physics, you know, if you want to solve a problem, you need to look at the clues given here. It says it holds an A4 size paper. Now, why is this A4 size paper given to you? The A4 size paper is given to you. The reason is because... It tells you what is the dimension of the paper. What is the dimension of, a of an A4 size paper? Usually, the width of an A4 size paper is seen to be a 21 centimeter, and the length of an A4 size paper is seen to be a 30 centimeter. Okay, this is known to us. You just Google it, you will get it across. Okay, it should have been given, but it's not given. This is a question from the IB board. That's why we have got this. Now, towards it, now, what do we need to know here? An ant moves. What is the distance moved by the ant? 30 centimeter. So ant starts from here. It goes 21 centimeter here. Since it moves on the paper, so it has to move backwards by 9 centimeter. Since it's 30 centimeter, might be it has moved until here. The ant is finally at this point. Okay, let me call this point as A over here. Now at the same time, the paper, okay, the ant is finally at this point. The paper has moved by 50 centimeter. Okay, from here. That means this edge is now at this point. Now, so as a result of this, Okay, the ant is now at this point, which means what? Now, this position is not moved by 50 centimeters. See, so so now the net displacement should be along this direction. It should be, it. this point has moved by a distance of 50 centimeters, but the ant is moving backwards by 9 centimeters. So the net displacement of the ant, say, for example, if this x-axis is seen to be 50 minus 9, which is equal to 41 centimeters. Okay, what is this now? This is your delta x. What is delta x? Displacement of the ant in the negative direction. This the student has failed to recognize, and as a result of it, the net displacement he has given as 158.11 by just taking the Pythagoras theorem. What does it say? He has taken only so much. So he has taken 150 centimeter down. This is 150 centimeter down, and he has directly taken 50 centimeter, which means uh, he has assumed the ant is at the same point, it has not moved, and 50 centimeter. This he has taken, and then he has found out what is the net displacement. As a result of it, okay, you have got it incorrectly. So he has done it from here. This is your starting point. He has taken it like this. Then he has taken it like this. And thus he has taken this value. So thus the answer is incorrect. Did you understand the misconception? The misconception here is the Z coordinate has not been properly taken into. Okay. And the velocity multiplied by time is not been considered. Right. So this is a problem on 3D. So that's what you need to understand, right? Now, let us look at the correct solution. The correct solution, now let us start with this. An ant starts moving like this. And as we have seen, the ant has moved by a distance of nine centimeter backwards. Nine centimeter backwards. Now the paper falls. Now this is a new position. Oh my God, you will not be able to see this. Okay, let us do it like this. Let us do it like this. Now the ant is at this point. Ant is at this point. Okay, the paper has been extended until here. Okay, now this was the old position of the ant, the initial position, the edge of it. This is a new position. Okay, the distance between these two is seen to be 
50 centimeter because as it falls, the air resistance, because of the air resistance, it starts floating like this and falls slowly and it comes over here. Okay. Now, the net displacement. Now, what is the new position of the end? New positions here, which means somewhere over here. So, which correspond to a point here. Now, this is where, sorry, which correspond to a point here, which is nothing but your 9 centimeter backwards. 9 centimeter backwards. Which means the net displacement of the end is seen to be 40 centimeter, 41 centimeter. So, you will have delta x is equal to 41 centimeter. It has moved down by a distance of y units. Now, let me write delta y is equal to how much? How many? What is the distance moved by it? It is seen to be 150, 1.5 meters, right? 1.5 meters. 1.5 meters. I will write this as 150 centimeter. Okay. And then what else do we have? So we have taken delta x, delta y, and delta z. I should take. What is delta z? See, it has walked along in like this. What is the distance walked? 21 centimeter. Because we know this one will be 21 centimeter and this one would be 30 centimeter. So your delta z should now be equal to 31 centimeter. I hope you are conversant with uh, this delta x, uh, delta y, and delta z. There's nothing but changes in the values of x, y, and z. Don't get confused with what is this delta value. Okay. So delta refers only to the changes. Okay. Now, now we have got three different values and I'm asking you to find out the displacement. Now, displacement square, r square is equal to delta x square plus delta y square plus delta z square. Right? So how do we know this? It's so simple. It's nothing but you use r square equal to x square plus y square plus z square. Three dimensions, right? Okay, if this is your x square plus y square is plane, which is your two dimension, and then you take that vector, multiply that by the sorry, get the comp, get the value along the z vector. So thus you get this. And thus, now let us take up this. I can now write r is equal to square root of let me substitute everything, which should be 41 square plus 150 square plus 31 square, right? Hey, why did you get 31? This is 21. Oh my God, I made a mistake here. 21 square. 21 square. Which should now be equal to. Let me now compute what is the value. If you have a calculator with you, you can easily find out. So this should now be 41 square. 41 square. There's a lot of crackers. People are busting. So I do not know the clarity of the video. Hope you are able to get what I am doing over here. Otherwise, let me know amidst all this noises. I would like to record it once again. So the answer here would be 41 square plus 150 square plus 21 square is given by square root of 24. 622. Okay, I hope you also get the same answer. Let me take the square root of it. Square root of 24, 622 is 156.91. 91. What is this now? This is in terms of centimeter. Okay, so the magnitude of the ants displacement is seen to be 1.56 meters. I hope. You have understood this problem clearly. And if you still have any doubts or you are not able to hear it appropriately, do let me know. I would like to make it once again fresh, this video, and post it. Okay. Thank you, friends, for watching this video. Do like, share with your friends, comment if you have any comments, and subscribe to my channel. This will provide, you, provide me uh, a lot of appreciation towards it. I don't charge anything for this. The only thing that I need is more number of likes, more number of subscribers, so that you are not going to pay me the new age. Google will pay me, right? YouTube will pay me, right? If I have more number of subscribers, definitely I can monetize this channel. So that's what I was looking at. Thank you, friends, for watching until the end. Thank you.